Real Agriculture Soybean School is brought to you by Basic Seeds and Lollamond Plant Care. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. Today I'm at Cortland, Ontario at Robinson Farms, catching up with Henry Prinzen from Mazic Seeds. Sir, how's it going? It's going great, Bern. How are you? I'm good. We are, uh, we're going to hang out with Jason Robinson today. Now, Jason is chasing 100 bushel soybeans with a pivot, with irrigation here on the farm. What's he up to? Yeah, the pivot's really cool, right? We're, we're putting on water when we need it. We're trying to maximize yield potential. And, you know, we're in a big drought down here. And these beans look awesome this year, Burn. He's using fertigation. We're timing the water management. We're using other stuff like fungicides, you know, uh, variety selection, really important. And then at the end of the day, look into the future, maybe some variable rate populations on the soil type changes here. Here's Jason Robinson. Jason, uh, we're out here in your soybean field. Just uh, can you give us a bit of a background on your operation today? Yeah, so my dad and I farm together here in Cortland, Ontario. Uh, we farm very light, sandy soil, ex-tobacco ground, um, to the point where we what two inches in the last two and a half, three months of rain, so we're really dry. We water uh, a lot of our crops, um, grow corn, beans, sweet corn for a fresh market, and yeah, like, welcome to the sand ground. So Jason, you know, we see the pivot here. How long have you been watering beans? You know, what's our goal? What's our yield goal even when we water these beans here? And you know, what could it look like if we didn't have water here this year? So we've been doing beans for about three, maybe four years. Um, we're ultimately, we're just trying to gain more yield out of the land we own. Uh, we're hoping to see 100 bushel beans, like that's our goal. Um, if we don't get rain, I'm, I'm expecting this area you're going to see a lot of everything under 30. Um, so this, uh, we are aiming for the 100. Don't know if we'll get it, but that's where our goal is. So we talk a lot about water management or when beans need rain. We hear, you know, August makes beans. So when are you watering and how much are you watering uh, these beans? So in the month of July, we did water twice just to keep the crop alive because it got so hot and dry. Um, we're only putting a half inch of water down at a trip. Um, and then when August comes along, then we, uh, you know, they always say August and September make bean yields. So then we really went at it and, and still only that half inch of pass, but then we tighten the windows up and at least once a week it's getting the half inch, if not tighter than that. Tell us about the pivot system here, Jason. Okay, so this one actually is a fairly long one. This one's uh, 1,700 feet long. You got a center base down in, in the middle of the farm that is uh, concreted in and the thing just walks in a circle. And uh, we just, we set the water rate based on the nozzles and the gallons per minute, and it just slowly walks around the farm. This one covers about 115 acres, and we have all, them, all the way down to a 15 acre one um, to do corners in that. So you can get different lengths and sizes. Um, we do have travelers, like reels, uh, they're a lot more labor intensive, so we, we don't like using them if we can help it, but this one is 1,660 feet long, and yeah, it, when it runs, it runs for a lot of hours to cover the 118 acres. So when we look at this pivot, what do you think it would cost to install a pivot like this on, uh, on someone else's farm? Not including pump and pipe and underground and all that. I always say if you're going to, you know, put $2,000 into taking the water off, you're gonna put $2,000 into putting the water back on. So, you know, I say probably the pivot's gonna cost you, depending on what you get, in that 1,500 an acre to 2,000. And then the pumps and pipes and all that is kind of on top. Right on. So how else are we using these pivots to reach 100 bushels? What else are you doing, Jason? So in our case in this farm here, or actually all our beans and corn that we water, we, uh, we fertigate. Uh, we push the fertility through. Um, so we don't put a lot down up front. We just feed the crop as it grows. So we'll take tissue samples. We'll read off a base, uh, either a sap sample or a tissue sample and work off of and put a fertigation program together and mix fertilizer together to go in the pivot and out on the crop. What other management are you doing when we're talking 100 bushel beans? What else do you have to do to make sure we get a good crop here? 
variety selection is a huge one for us. Like we really watch the varieties. We 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 go specifically after certain characteristics of the crop, um, the way the placements, the, the you know stand. White mold's an issue or can be an issue, so we want to make sure we really pay attention to that kind of stuff. And width, like we run 15 inch bean row here, no till. We are no till beans. Um, we're struggling with the no-till side just because of the big corn crops we're growing, the trash management. Um, but yeah, like a lot of it's variety selection, and then, and then you got to keep the plant he healthy and happy. So we're fungiciding. You, you gotta, you gotta make keep that plant going and keep it happy. I call it. So when we talk about beans, we hear a lot of people talking about really low populations. What are you actually running under a pivot? What's your planning rate? So. I'm going to change for next year. We're 150,000 right now, across the board. Um, we're setting our planter up next year for variable rate, and I'm going to go lower than that. Um, I, I actually want to go closer to 110, 120, especially in the heavy ground because their beans are just getting so big and rank. But right now, our, our aim is 150 planted, so 140-ish, give or take, final stance. Hey Jason, a couple quick questions to wrap up. You know, what about the flexibility does this pivot give you? And you know, for the guys that are wondering, what kind of ROI is this pivot going to be? So with us, um, if we're dry in, in May, you know, planting season's really dry. Well, the flexibility is turn it on and germinate a crop. Um, we've we essentially have taken a lot of our risk of environmental risk out of of moisture, lack of moisture here. So it, it allows us to do anything we want all season long. We can even do frost protection with it. Um, you know, if we're gonna get an early frost and the corn's up and it's gonna chance of getting burned off, we can run it through quick and, and protect it or try to protect it. Um, ROI, like when we bought this one, we, we budgeted on a five year turnaround and it was not a problem to do it. Now with the increasing cost of equipment and that, I think it might have to be stretched out a little longer than five years, but it's still not a, 10 year program right like you think you can roi it quicker than that great stuff jason appreciate you making the time for soybean school no problem thank you very much you can find more episodes of the soybean school by going to soybeanschool.com or finding the real agriculture youtube channel